So welcome along. Uh, you're all very, very welcome. For those of you who've um, been on the calls before, this is the sixth session I think we've done together. And all it came from was uh, a wanting to do something in lockdown. Um, because I may have shared with some of you before, and you may recognize this in your world, but Pac-Man at my diary. And so I saw three or four months of work go blur and disappear. And I thought, whoa, what are we gonna do now? This is a bit scary. And I'm sure you've been through the same things. Now, I know some of you are busy working, some of you are furloughed, some of you, like me, are in the freelance world, so it's gonna be very interesting going back. Some of you are in different sectors. I know there's a lot of people from the retail world come on. The Manchester City guys always love to have you along as well. Uh, Vince, Nicola, uh, Bob, Rob, Victoria, all of you, you're very, very welcome. So I'm, I'm very much aware that we're all from different worlds. We all do different things. But what we try to do with these sessions is make them pertinent and relevant. And the last session I did, I just put a list of things up and said, okay, what do you want to talk about for our little time together on a Wednesday afternoon? And it came back as self-confidence. So the self-confidence conundrum and I'll stop the share and look at all you like that. The self-confidence conundrum is what we're going to talk about today. Uh, and self-confidence is really, really interesting, isn't it? I want to delve into a little bit. I'm going to say straight away up front, um, self-confidence is something that touches all of us. My world is communication. So where I normally come into the self-confidence world is helping to people to feel more comfortable in slightly alien environments. Maybe they have to walk in front of people on the stage. Maybe they, maybe they have to do these video calls and actually talking to an inanimate object, which is what I'm doing now. I don't mean you guys. I mean the bit of kit that I've got looking at me in the lens here is a skill. And for those of you who worked in television, I know there's a lot of people from the television world, it takes a while to get to the idea of being able to speak to this inanimate object, but also realize you're talking to real people and connecting with real people. So that's been my world. And so that's been how I've connected with, with sort of confidence um, and self-confidence. So I thought we'd spend a little bit of time having a look at it and having a look at why uh, confidence and self-confidence is really important to us. Why some people seem to be uber confident in every situation. And I say seem to be, I want to explore that a little bit. And maybe some tips, tricks and techniques that I've learned down the years that may help you on your journey. And I'd be delighted if they do. I'd love to hear from you as well if there's something that resonates with you. I'll give an email address at the end that resonates with you about our session today that's been useful to you. Because the, the basics are, it's free. It's my gift to you to listen, have fun and talk about stuff that we don't get normal chance to talk about unless we have something like a lockdown. So let's get underway and talk about this self-confidence idea. And I'm going to share my screen with the uh, presentation so you all get to see that. And I normally say at this day, someone give me a wave, you can see that. Megan's normally on the ball. Thank you very much indeed. Lovely. So the self-confidence conundrum. I better say, before we get underway, um, there are quite a few people joining us today who have never met me before. Uh, I know there's a lot of people I know, which is great, and people I've had the pleasure of working with, which is great. I've had a strange sort of life. I, um, and forgive me for those people who know me. Trained surveyor, got bored, became a DJ in Europe. Really hard to believe now, but it's true. With red hair and white hair and silver hair at one stage of which a picture you're not going to get to see. Uh, came back, ran some nightclubs then fell into commercial radio and spent five years doing yes sir, D. here's another tune uh, and then moved to the bbc and became a little more legitimate at least in my parents eyes and uh, spent 16 years on and off with the bbc then worked to, in commercial tv uh, i saw a couple of people earlier who i worked with at yorkshire telly which is lovely to see you as well uh, and and done some various telly stuff and that moved into coaching and helping people to get to where they want to go. Firstly, in the media side, so a friend of mine, Nick Agarwal, who some of you know, said, will you come and coach the guys at Asda to help them be feel more comfortable in front of cameras? Yeah, sure. And that's strangely how my coaching career started and has carried on from there. And I love it. And so in normal times, I spend my life traveling around the world. I should have been in... Um, where should have been? And maybe some people on the call were due to be there as well, but out in Chicago in about three weeks time doing a big conference out there guess what that's not happening um but i have the equal pleasure of being online with you guys instead so that's totally made up for it so i, I spend my time doing that either talking from a straight uh, stage or working one-to-one -one and helping people on their journey and just sharing stuff 
from down the years that may be, may be useful for you. So today, talking about confidence, yeah, is confidence born or made? Self-confidence, do you think it's born or made? And this is where we do the clever stuff because I'm going to start a poll and let you have a bit of interaction. What do you reckon, guys? Over to you. Please feel free to, to see. Yep. I've got a couple of these during our little session today, which I hope you'll enjoy uh, taking part in. But please, wherever you are, feel free like it. Feel free like it. That doesn't make sense, but you know what I mean. Feel free to take part. Okay. Anybody else fancy having a quick go? Another 20 seconds, 10 seconds or so. Well, it's 20, 30 seconds on there. Right, let me close the polling. I bet no one's going to be surprised at this, really. There we go. What do you reckon? 14% said people are born like it. And 86% say people have developed it. Now, you probably um, know my thoughts on this, that I think we all develop it as we go through life. I don't think any little baby comes into the world and suddenly says, I'm fully formed, I'm really confident. I think it's the journey we have in our lives. I had a lovely conversation with a friend from America who I think is on the call today about how Americans, generalizing I know, tend to be uber confident or seem to be. And they said, yeah, well, they do that from school. They get school, kids doing spelling bees in front of classes. They get them in front of audiences from a very young age. So they get comfortable and then be in a comfortable place of being in front of strangers. And that's one of the things. It's about being in front of strangers, isn't it? This confidence we show on the outside. So let's explore that a little bit. So born or made, no. I'm going to give you a little quiz. Anybody fancy a quiz? Give me a little wave and nod or anything. Yeah, yeah. I'm only doing interactivity. It's the only exercise we had in about six weeks is going like that. So uh, I'm going to launch, <laughs> I'm going to launch a little quiz here. Uh, and you tell me what you think. I'm going to show you six famous people. And you have to tell me which of those people have had issues with their confidence. Go. Should have some music in the background here, but I could sing. Maybe not. Oh, voting going incredibly well, guys. Lots of you telling me which you think. It's a multi-choice, so you can choose one or the other. Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Reynolds I've been compared to many times, no, uh, is not doing as well as I thought you might do. Um, I love the way that Megan laughed then when I would even use Ryan Reynolds and me in the same sentence, as if, as if. <laughs> okay, another 10 seconds or so. Ah, interesting. Right, let me share that with you. There we are. Can you sh see the results there? Uh, we have a clear winner that Lady Gaga sure that's not how they pronounce it but I'm not down with the kids uh 85 percent of you reckon that she's had issues with self-confidence uh Justin Bieber who um I think Neil's here Neil's met Justin Bieber he's a friend of Justin Bieber's he's on the call today but they're in Justin Bieber and then Brian Reynolds Thomas Edison probably a guess Albert Einstein Jennifer Lopez so let me stop sharing that close that up and give you a bit of honesty. Guess what, guys? They all have. It was cheating. But every one of those people have talked about issues with self-confidence. Ron Reynolds was once quoted as, he sees himself as the fat, pimply kid. Eh? That's how he sees himself inside. Obviously, everybody else thinks he's this good-looking hunk or whatever. Um, I don't know what people see in him, really. But they all have issues, which is saying, hang on a second, people do generally. Yeah. Most of us, at some stage in our career, I don't know anybody who is so confident that they've never had a self-questioning, that they've never stopped and thought, well, actually, where am I? What am I doing? Do I feel comfortable about this? Let me um, share this with you. Okay. Technology must be easy. There must be a single button I can do this with. My question for you today, guys, 
is where you see yourself in this self-confidence journey. Some of you I know, and some of you I've known for a long time, come across as the uber-confident, stick me in there, I'll sort it out. Yet those people I've worked with, we've had honest conversations about that's not always the case. And sometimes we have to boost ourselves up to be in that place. And I want to talk about some of the techniques a little later that I've suggested that people try out. And if you have any techniques as well, I'll keep an eye on the chat room at the same time. And if you have any thoughts or any, any uh, things you'd like to, um, to pop in on that chat room that you've learned down the years, I'd love to hear them too. Yeah, we're not saying this is all expert space. This is a conversation about how we can do things and maybe do things slightly differently. So where do you see yourself on this? Do you have those days when you wake up and you feel, ah, fantastic, and the days when you feel, oh, can I go back to bed? Sadly, at the moment, I think a lot of us are in that, oh, let's go back to bed bit. I don't know about you. This whole lockdown now has got to the stage of, and I think I've mentioned on calls before, it's a bit like the grief curve it's getting a bit worse. It's, it's kind of doing another curve as well. And I don't know about you, it's getting frustrating and annoying and tense. And, and probably in your house too, tensions are rising because we want to get on and do stuff. We want to get on and actually um, get back to normality if we can. Now, I know some of you around the world have different stages of normality in this, and you might be living in your, your normal world. For a lot of us, I know, I wouldn't say suffering is too strong a word, but you know what I mean. Yeah, so it's, it's slightly difficult to say the least. And I'm hoping there'll be some sort of outcome sooner rather than later. Although the conversations I've had with those people in the business world, this is going to last for quite a few months, if not years yet. So the question is, where do you see yourself? And the other thing worth thinking about is confidence versus overconfidence. Let me just touch on this. We talk about tips for bringing our confidence levels up. There is the danger, though, if we do the overconfidence bit, that people take that as total arrogance. And I'm sure you've seen people when they walked on stage and, hey, and it's all about, look at me, 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 me. And people think, would you want to spend time with them? So there's always the danger of that overconfidence. So let's get the balance together in our conversation today. Uh, humility is something I talk about with a lot of clients. And humility is actually a really, really important skill for leaders. And I know a lot of people said, what's the future generation of leaders? What will they need to do? What will they need to be? How will they need to be? I think humility has got to be one of those skills. Humility, emotional intelligence, and being able to connect with audiences and teams, I think it's going to be vital because we've talked about process and emotion. The people who've been used to process for a long time, I think are going to go into this stage of we can't keep doing the same processes we've always used we're going to have to look for something different. And there's an opportunity there for people who are a little bit creative, who can think slightly, like slightly differently, who maybe are strategic thinkers, because that's what the world, I think, will be looking for in the next few months as things move on. So for those of you who've been with me for the last few weeks and, uh, and for those I've known for a lot longer, you know a lot of the stuff I talk about is about journeys and the journeys we go on in our lives and understanding the full journey, not just a little bit of the journey. Because in the emotional journey, we start off and you know when you wake up in the morning and you're full of beans, you're ready to go, you're ready to rock and roll, bring on the day, it's gonna be amazing. Give me a nod if you know those days. Lovely. Loads of nods, thank you. Uh, and then what happens? Something derails us. Or we get to the first station on the journey and we get off and the coffee machine in the buffet's broken or we've lost our ticket or, you know, using all those analogies. But basically, everything stops and gets distracted and goes off in different directions. So this great feeling we started the day off with gets moved very quickly. And I want to talk about how we can deal with that shortly because I find those are the what-ifs. Yeah. Familiar with the what ifs? What if I say the wrong thing? What if I do the wrong thing? What if I look stupid? Those little words inside our head that niggles away. And it's not logical. We know it's not logical because the logical side of our brain would say, don't be so stupid, John. But the emotional side of our brain says, Aah! recognize that? Happens, doesn't it? So how can we kind of get over that? I thought 
I'll share a story with you, which apologize if some people have heard it. Uh, and someone come online, and I think I did this a few weeks ago, but do it again because it's fun. I'm going to show you a picture of someone. Someone unmute and tell me who it is as fast as you can. Are you ready? Now. Meatloaf. Meatloaf. Thank you. You took the words right out of my mouth. I only do it for the gag. Thanks, Megan. But it is Meatloaf. And uh, hundreds of years ago, when I was in commercial radio, I was sent to interview Meatloaf in Sheffield City Hall, remember it well. And um, I, I got outside, and forgive me for those who may have heard the story before, I'm, I'm ready with my, um, was it a ewer at the time? Jason will recognise what a ewer is. It's an old-fashioned recording bit of kit with um, sort of reel-to-reel, -reel. I think it was. That's how long ago it was, folks. Uh, in fact, it's my, sorry, going slightly off tangent, it's my daughter's 30th birthday today, and she's, for some people who know Alex, she lives up in Newcastle and works at the BBC in Newcastle, and I've got one of those that she hasn't. Scars of where I used to cut quarter-inch tape to put on the radio. Jason is smiling there because he knows those days. Yeah, sc scars where you used to have to cut the tape very quickly and stick it together. Digital people have never had that experience. Anyway, meatloaf was before the digital experience. So I'm off to interview Meatloaf and I'm waiting outside the um, stage door and his tour manager came out, uh, American guy, and said to me, hey, I think he last said, hey, he said, you have two minutes, no more. I'm thinking two minutes. And for anybody who's done interviews, uh, two minutes is not a lot of time. But at the time I was young, wet behind the ears, and I went, okay, two minutes, I can do that thinking, what do I say? So I got me three questions in my head. Walked into the room, and the first question said, what do I call you? He said, my friends call me Meat. I don't know you have had that experience, but it's a bit bizarre. And then I asked my three questions, and then he said, the, the words which are burnt into my mind will never go away. He said, what else do you want to know, John? And I said, it's not frozen. I couldn't think of a thing to say because, and years later, I've turned it into a technique, a visualization, which is on the right of your screen. I put him on a pedestal and I push myself down. And I'm sure we all recognize situations where we've done the same thing. We put people, situations, yeah, on pedestals and push ourselves down. That's our emotional brain kicking in, whereas the logical brain would say, don't be silly. So that was the meatloaf story, just to say, look, I've been there, I know what it's like, and still go there. Like all of us, we have days when we don't feel uh, fantastic, we don't feel good, we don't feel buzzing for it. But sometimes there are little techniques that can help to just get us up that high. I'm not saying we can stay up there, because I don't know anybody who can stay uber uh, confident all the time. It's too much of a stress on the brain, I think. I've got yet to meet There's one or two people who are very confident on this call, I know that, but there will always be little niggles from time to time. Distractions, I just love that photo. Uh, distractions that get in the way. We allow distractions, oh, squirrel. Uh, we allow distractions to just get in the way. Do you recognize that? You know, you can have a great day, things will be going really, really well, and all of a sudden, oh, what was that over there? So instead of, instead of sorry, instead of focusing, on where we are and what we're doing, we allow the distractions to kind of move us on to something else. I bet there's no one on this call that hasn't happened to. You start on one thing and then you go, ping, over there, or ping, or the brain sticks something in. Did I turn the, did I turn the light off? Yeah, did I, did I feed the cat? All that kind of stuff just gets in the way. So distractions can be really difficult for us because part of our confidence, yeah, is about being focused and feeling good in ourselves. But these distractions just get in the way and, 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 and stop us doing it. Another thing that can happen is, is this, yeah? The detail trap. We'll be doing something, right? And we get into the detail of it. Now we're all different. We have different levels of this. Some people just see the big picture. Other people get into detail very, very quickly. But the problem is getting into detail very, very quickly, you don't get to see the big picture. And one of the things we can do is, and forgive me, I'm going to get you all to do it again. Just go like that, folks. Go on, wherever you are, around the world. I can tell if you're up, go and wine, you can do it. Yeah, go and roll, that's it, lovely. And now just go, now if I could take a picture, this is absolutely fabulous. You look fantastic. David, go on, David Taylor, put your hands up like that. Thank you very much, you join us. Uh, right, 
okay? And what I want you to do is just go like that. Now, you'll never forget this now. I'm sorry I've embedded it in your brain. And the reason for that, go on, Sean, you can do it. Thank you. The reason we can do that is visually, are we seeing the big picture? It's a simple question to ask. But how often have you got stuck into the detail of something and forgotten what the big picture looks like? We don't see the big picture in terms of relationships. We don't see the big picture in terms of what's going on in the major organization. We just see our bit, and our bit becomes all-consuming. The most successful people in life do that a lot. They might not walk through their, their offices and everything going like that because they get a reputation for being a bit weird. However, yeah, the best people do that and consciously look What's the big picture here? What's the big outcome we really want to? What, what could we be missing if we only look at the detail in the middle? So there's a thought. Maybe later on today, stop and think, am I getting delved into this detail stuff? The one thing about lockdown has given us, guys, it's given us time to think about it. I hope a lot more. Even those people who are, are working remotely, in other words, working from home, will get time to actually think a little bit more uh, and, and explore a little bit more as well. So one thing we have to think about is what's going in there rather than what's happening outside. Yeah, the reactive, proactive idea that our brain, if we say one half is logical, I'm simplifying it, I know, but one half is logical, one half of it is emotional. The amygdala, the middle part of our brain, is the bit that is always looking for danger. It's, it's, our, it's our danger button right in the center of our brains, which is saying, where, is there any danger around? And looking around the world all the time, to protect us. They also call it the lizard brain. It's been there since we came out from the swamp. Uh, and the story I normally tell is uh, if you were living in the uh, caves, our ancestor, ancestors, ancestors, were living in the caves, a big hairy woolly mammoth comes over the horizon. You think, oh, it's a big hairy woolly mammoth. Yeah, you run away or you fight it, fight or flight. The amygdala oh, covers as well sex and sleep. We're not gonna be talking about that today. What do you mean shame? Uh, so right? Fight and flight. So the fight and flight's been there with us all the time. The brain hasn't changed. It's still looking to see whether it needs to fight or flight to run away or do something about it. So we know that's happening. And if I make that into our emotional side of our brain that's doing that, that's why so many different things go on. We get distracted. We go in different directions. We see the little bits because we get our comfort blanket in the little bits rather than thinking, oh, let's go like that. Does that make sense to you guys? Bit of a nod if that's, is that, yeah, lovely. So that's one thing we have to think about. So on this emotional journey, there are some people, I'm sure no, no people on this call are like that. Well, let's hope it sorts itself out. Recognize anybody you work with, guys? Yeah, they cross their fingers and think, oh, it'll be all right. It'll work itself out. I don't need to do anything to me. It'll just, it'll just be good. You know the people who are procrastinators? Great word, in it? I was thinking, procrastination. Uh, it's a great song. But anybody admit to being a procrastinator at all? Anybody ever done it in their lives? I'm looking at the screen again to see if there's lots of people. Yeah, let's be really honest, guys. Loads of people nodding. Procra Hi, Martha from Germany. Nice to see you. Uh, people procrastinating. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it later. I'll do it next week. I'll do it sometime. We can all be totally guilty of that, can't we, guys? And it's so easy to slip into, let's do it later. Let's not do it now. And part of that is our emotional brain, because our emotional brain, that we've talked about before, has no time scale. Our emotional brain looks at something in the now and then moves on. So if we say to our emotional brain, oh, I want to lose a bit of weight, the emotional brain says, yeah, sure, okay, what's next? And moves on. Our logical brain thinks, oh, yeah, we should do that. But our emotional brain, which is stronger, says, ah, let's put it off. So procrastination is a challenge that we get into. And then I have to ask the question, okay, so what is controlling us? Are you controlling your brain or is your brain controlling you? Is that emotional side of your brain driving you and you do everything it says? Or are we taking a bit of control back to say, actually, here's an opportunity for me to try and take a little bit more control? And that's what I tend to talk to my clients about, is how do you take a bit more control to feel better in the moment, to then build up that confidence and build up that internal strength? So if you've got a bit of paper and a pen, maybe write down, 
Yeah, am I controlling it or is it controlling me? There is a technique called name your brain, if you fancy playing with that one, where you give your, your brain a name so it becomes an, another person and you blame it for it. I, I once called mine Brian, because I found it quite funny, but name that, oh, Brian, what are you saying that for? And it becomes a second person, which is sometimes easier to, to deal with than trying to do this kind of double thinking all the time. So here we are, guys, on our emotional journey, wondering about who's controlling us. Yeah. So what do we do about it? And which is the, the, the crucial thing. What do we do? Firstly, I have to ask you another little question. So stand by. Don't know where you are, Linda, but that sunshine looks lovely. Um, and she's having a lunch as well. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do another little, little quiz here, guys. A little, little poll. So are you ready? Please be honest with me. I've asked one or two people the same question before. Are you ready? Here we go. I'm going to give you a little bit of time to think about that. And Paul, who's in Florida celebrating his birthday today, thinks, well, actually, I, I've got every day to think about it. I go for my runs, I keep fit and everything else. Hi, right, guys. Feel free to fill it in. another couple of minutes really interesting there is one that's still on zero which I will reveal in a second or two Sorry, by the way, I shouldn't, that was really rude of me. I looked out the window then. Um, all sorts of creatures, I'm in my log cabin in the woods, and all sorts of creatures tend to wander past. I had a deer wander past yesterday. But there's all sorts of different things wander past. And because I'm in a wooden cabin, I'm always keeping a lookout for the woodpeckers, because that's not exactly what you want. Anyway, right, let me end this. Right. Are we ready then? No guilt trips coming up. There we go. Any surprises there? Pretty even, evenly spaced. Um, the, the fun one, never, I'm feeling guilty right now. I don't need to, uh, but that, that I should have said before, that was anonymous. I haven't a clue who said what, which is totally fair. Um, some people say a lot every day. I love that, that's great. An hour a day, very fortunate. 30 minutes a day, lovely. Then it kind of delves off a little bit, yeah. So let me come back to, to this. If we don't, and I'll, I'll come back to see you as well while I, while I do that. If we don't spend time on ourselves, who in this world is going to come along with the magic dust and say, there you go, fully formed, off you go? None of our colleagues are going to do it. Probably none of our family are going to do it. None of our friends are going to do it because they're too busy in their own lives doing their own things. But if we don't spend time on ourselves, how are, are we ever going to change? If we don't take, like you are taking time out now, guys, and I appreciate it. You've taken an hour of your day, your busy day, because I'm sure you were wanting to travel all over the place and go to the beach and sit in the sand or whatever. Maybe that's not happening. However, you've given me an hour of your time today. And I'm going to suggest, why not take time out for you? Yeah, I hope you're seeing this as a bit of you time, but why not keep that going? Because the one thing I've learned down the years, unless you spend time thinking about this stuff, we don't change. We just settle down and we just do what we've always done. And the expression is, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. And then you'll blame someone else, which is the way it tends to happen, right? We don't want to blame anybody else. We want to take responsibility for it and do something about it. And if you ever wanted an opportunity, guys... This is the time to do stuff about ourselves and grow. I've shared with you a few times for other people on the other calls, I want to learn something new every day. I get excited about thinking about stuff. Yeah, I wake up in the morning and think, oh, that's interesting. And just that, for me, is, is bliss. 
and getting time to do it is actually the one good thing about the lockdown. There's not much about good about lockdown apart from it's giving us time to do stuff and time to think in the positive world, which is where I want to go on to next. Because on our emotional journey, and I'll share this with you again so you can see it. Da da da. Okay. So on our emotional journey, it's time to make a start. Okay. You've already probably made a start. You already probably, because you've taken time out to come and join us on this, you believe in doing this stuff, which is lovely. But maybe do a little bit more. And the first question I'd ask is conscious or subconscious? I really believe to be effective, we have to understand what we're doing in the conscious world to then let our subconscious deal with it. It's again like the logical and emotional. The logical in our conscious world, the emotional in our subconscious world. But how often do we let our subconscious drive us? How do often do we get the ni little niggles get in the way and that becomes a big problem? You know the mountains and molehills mole idea that someone will say something to you and you think, oh, yeah, so for instance, when Beverly said, you look like a boy band, I had a choice. Actually, I found it funny, but I had a choice. If I'd have been affected by that, I could have thought, oh, gosh, I'm worried about that for the rest of the day. I'm sure in our lives, all of us have had someone said something, whether they meant it, whether they're trying to get an effect or whatever, and it's that earworm's got in and we've let it get to us. I can't wait to share with you. I, I, I do something called Speakers for Schools. And if you haven't looked at that, Robert Peston, who um, on ITN started this organization where you volunteer to go into schools and talk to schools. And a few months ago, I talked to this, this group of kids. Great, great fun, about 300 young people. And um, they organized their own feedback forms as part of the course thing they were doing, which is fantastic. And then the teacher sent me the feedback forms. It was lovely. Got all these things saying, oh, fab, John, inspirational. Really like that, apart from the one. These are 15-year-olds. Do you know what he said? Heard it all before. 15, for goodness sake. Yeah? And I let that earworm me. I let that get into the niggle bombs here. Yeah, thinking, what the heck? What did I get wrong? What did I do wrong? And I cut, started going back over it again. The, some, it's this original thought. This is stuff I've thought about and worked on everything else. Yeah. And then I thought, John, come on, think about this. That's your subconscious brain kicking in. That's your emotional brain kicking in and saying, ooh, not sure about that. Back to the who's controlling it. Are we in charge of it or is it in charge of us? So a couple of suggestions. Be conscious of your subconscious as a little post-it note up on the wall. You know I love post-it notes. Be conscious of your subconscious. It's common sense but we don't do it, and I bet there's not many people around you do it either. You won't realize what the subconscious is doing until you think about it. So be conscious of your subconscious is one of them. And one of my other favorites is reflect rather than react. How many times have we done something, spur of the moment, knee jerk, and then thought, wish I hadn't done that. Ooh, yeah, how's that gonna work out? Again, we all tend to do it. But I love that as an expression, Re reflect rather than react. Because going back to what we did before with the hands going out like that, that gives us time to reflect rather than just go straight back in and reacting. The other suggestion is be more proactive about it. Yeah, the world is reactive around us. We're expected to react to. And in the business world especially, we've got into this reactive situation where most businesses are run reactively now, right? And under pressure, which I know a lot of organizations are, they're clamping down and looking for processes they've always done to get them out of where they are now. It's not going to happen, guys. We have to be more proactive. And the world is going to be looking for proactive people because there's enough people staying within their comfort blanket, right? Have we talked about the confidence, confidence loop on this, guys? Someone give me a nod? No, I don't think so. All right. I'm going to really push technology here. I'm not sure if I can do this, but I think I can. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing that for a second. And then I'm going to do something very clever, which I'm hoping will work. Um, are you ready? Fingers crossed. There. OK. Which means come into the studio, which is all of six inches away. But it means I can use a whiteboard. So the confidence, confidence loop. OK. When we start doing something, 
we, we set off and we are doing it more and more and more and becoming more and more competent. And guess what? The more competent we become, the more confident we become in doing it. And I'm sure you recognize that in, in your lives where you do something and the more you do it, the more confident you become and then the more competent at it you get. But, and here's the but, that competence confidence loop can also be your comfort blanket edges. And if your comfort blanket edges are there and you stay within your comfort blanket, your competence confidence loop, guess what? Nothing changes. You just carry on doing the same thing. I always say to people, okay, when you get a moment in your self-reflective time, find out where you're going to push your confident, competent loop holes. Where are you going to go outside it? Right. Technology-wise, I'm coming back to you guys. So I'm going to come over to here and come back in there. Right. Okay. Um, but try it. What is your comfort? Where is your comfort blanket? And how do you know when you're stepping outside it? I know you all have. We all have at some stage. But do we recognize it or do we just do it and it happens? It's a little thought to maybe mull around sometime later on today. So the confidence, competence loop, maybe something you can play with. Um, the other thing as well is false imposter syndrome, which we have talked about before, which people um, think to themselves or in personal thoughts. I'm crap at this, but no one's found out yet. Yeah. Or they pay me a lot of money for this but no one's quite got it, but I don't really know what the hell I'm doing. That's the way we think. It's not true. It's false assumption, but that, that can be a little earworm as well if we're not careful. So here's another little um, technique to play with, right? The chore bucket and the excitement bucket. So imagine in your head there are two buckets. There's a chore bucket and an excitement bucket. Here's the question, guys. Feel free to unmute and tell me, because we haven't chatted a lot between us, but I might pick on someone to tell me. Chore excitement, where do we put most stuff? Let me go to you, Bernie, right? I'm gonna unmute you. Where do we put most stuff, Bernie? Off the chore bucket. In the chore. The other one. Totally right, in the chore. What about you, Simon? In the chore bucket? I try and stay in the excitement as much as possible, John. But I love it, I love it. I love it. And uh, thank you so much, guys. I'm, I'm going to mute again now. But yeah, I've just started domestic in that household. You know, it's nice. Um, it's not true. It's not true. But it is true, isn't it? We tend to pop stuff into the chore bucket rather than the excitement bucket. And we just do it naturally. We don't even think about it. And unfortunately, with the way our brains work, they add the chore side together because our brain is negative leaning. So we'll think of something, those little what, what ifs and say, right, oh, that's happened. What about that? What if I don't do that? And the expression I normally use is, oh, look, it's raining. Oh, I remember when I went out last side, last time, I wrecked that pair of shoes. Those shoes are really nice. I didn't get them bad. All those are loops of negative thought. And we do it naturally, and we put it all into the chore bucket. So maybe spot when you're popping stuff into the chore bucket. It does make a big difference. But try for it. Try for it. See how you feel. Everybody wants an easy pill. This is my easy pill, guys, my present to you. It's the habitude pill, right? It's a question and a combination of habits and attitude. If you've been with me before, I've shared this before. It's how do we get the habits to do things over and over again? Because again, the emotional side of our brain works on repetition. It's like muscle memory, right? Don't expect it. The logical side thinks, yeah, that makes sense. The emotional side of our brain goes, yeah, yeah, I'm going to move on. So you have to keep on doing it to get the habits of doing it. But once you keep on doing it, it settles in. Uh, the story I would tell you is about when people walk on stage. And when they first start presenting in, in big audiences, they think, and then the more they do it, they're actually telling their emotional brain, actually, calm down. This is quite good. Calm down. This is an opportunity. Calm down. Actually, I'm quite enjoying this. And when they're on that journey, then things start to change. So it's, it's, it's creating that habit and attitude combined, the habitude to make a difference. As far as self-confidence is concerned, here's a couple of things to think about, which you could do today. Yeah, you could have fun with when we finish here and, and go and have a go at it, right? So what have we got? Help others. Now, if ever there was a time to help others from a distance, but also maybe give them a ring 
Yeah. Um, my, uh, another personal story, because it's Alex, my, my daughter's birthday today, Tom, her partner, has got films from all over the world from people saying happy birthday. And it's, it's yeah, from family and friends and everything else, a, a better party than they originally planned. Yeah, help others. How could you help someone today? How can you make a difference? Because it, it's all worth doing. How could your knowledge and experience benefit someone else? That's all I'm doing this for, guys. Yeah, how can we make a difference to help other people? How can you take risks? Comfort blanket? Can we step outside that comfort blanket and do something we wouldn't normally have done? Yeah, because Tony, who's on the call, um, has pushed his comfort blanket. And it's true, Tony, I'll, I'll unmute you. We can talk about that. Um, you decided to push the comfort blanket and start doing some great videos, didn't you? I did, John, yeah. You uh, were kind of commented on them. And uh, I've got a new mic, so hopefully you can hear me. As you, that's per your recommendation. Absolutely wonderfully. But it pushed you outside the comfort. You've got a great experience in business. But to do the videos and actually have conversations, which have been very good with, with, with a camera, you had to push that comfort blanket. Completely, yeah, absolutely. I've never done it before, and it's just like talking to you now, but recorded. <laughs> Lovely. Well, thank you for that. Appreciate it. So maybe everybody else can take an example there and push your comfort blanket a little bit. What else on here? Achieving goals. Do you set yourself goals? Um, a lot of you do, I know. Um, if you're in that world, yeah, you've always set goals. What do you think is strategically about it or logistically and operationally about it? Yeah. How will your goal feel when you get there? That's always an interesting question to ask. How do you want to feel when you get to where you want to go? Do you, I never ask people to say specifically, this is my goal. Some people say, I want to be X. And then they get to become X and they think, no, now I want to be Y. So I never say specifically what's your goal, but do you have a feeling of what you'll feel when you get there? And which isn't why I like journeys so much, because if you have a journey, then at least you know where you are on that journey. Some people set off from one station, not quite sure what the next one is going to be in life. I'd much rather say, well, what's the longer journey? Is there a destination? And then we can have fun along the way. More about journeys in sessions to come. Building your self-image, guys. You are beautiful. Not many people tell you that, but I'll tell you that now. Yeah? There's enough people in the world that will diss people and sort of have a go. Our inner thoughts are, actually, I want to be me. There's lots of good stuff going on. Now, I know everybody's in problems at the moment. Everybody has various challenges in their life. We're, we're the same as you guys. But at the end of the day, what will matter most is how we feel about ourselves and how we see ourselves that will make a difference. And we can all do that. We can all, t but we'll only do it if we take time out to do it, you know? Take a bit of time out and make a list of all the great things that are going on. We're, we're all together today. How fortunate is that? Brilliant. There's people from all over the world have chosen to spend an hour and come on here and have a chat and have fun and whatever. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? What can you do later on today? Thanks, Kieran's nodding away. I like that, Kieran. Yeah, what can you do today to get that same, build yourself image? Do something, yeah? Now, it's, it's not an instant, guys. It's not an instant. Um, I, I, I need, and if my wife is watching this, which I think she might be, here's an admittance and a very personal admittance. I need to lose some weight, guys. Uh, I knew that when we went to the seaside last, which is a long time ago, and Beverly covered me in damp towels and rolled me back into the sea. So I need, need to do something different, right? Uh, I'm going to do it. But I'm working now on my um, emotional side to say, actually, let's just get this done. So now I've made it very public. I have no excuses. So there we go. I've borrowed you for uh, a little bit of personal. We'll see how we go. If, if, I'm, if I'm fading to nothing next time you see me on, on screen, just, yeah, you know the reason behind it. Emphasize your own strengths, guys. Goes with building your self-image, doesn't it, really? Take a few risks, achieve some goals, and help others. It's all kind of, it makes sense. So why do we go and have a go at it? Because it's worthwhile. And people say, oh, John, but no, no, honestly, I, I, I find it really hard to do that. I said, you have a choice. And they say, I don't have a choice. And I say, you have a choice. And they say, no, John, I don't have a choice. I said, you do have a choice. Because your choice, very simply, is this. It's how we look at things every single day. And guess what? We have a choice of attitude. We can choose our attitude every day. Most people don't. Look around, look around the people around you. Are they choosing their attitude? Or are they letting the world choose what their attitude's going to be? Radiators and drainers, we've talked about, you know, radiators, people coming down towards you think, oh, look who it is, 
fantastic, it's Jay Parkinson, fabulous, right? And the drainers, you think, oh no, look who it is, can I get out of the way quickly? Now, I suppose I have to say at this stage, I do really feel sorry for you if you're stuck in lockdown with a drainer because it's going to be hard work. I know no one on this call is, and they're not going to admit it if they were. <laughs> but, you know, it is, it is difficult. Yeah. But we can change our attitude. We can go towards where we want to be. Little technique as well, because I love sharing these techniques I have shared before. Uh, and this is a little, little pad of things I've, I've printed and had printed. But, uh, and I give them to my clients when working with them. And just says, what would the best in the world do now? It's a way of mentally making you stop and take time out. It's a way of emotionally getting to your emotional brain and saying, right, what would the best whatever do now? What would the best boss, what would the best husband, what would the best um, partner, what would the best, best leader do now? What would the best hospitality person do now? You know, all, this, all these different things, yeah? Just little reminders. And you can get, make, make your own on a Post-it note and then pop them up to keep reminding you. Because otherwise, what do we do? We go back to where we always are yeah it's got to be something we do that's longer term than just being in the moment because if we're just in the moment everything will move on from that so the emotional journey what do we want at the end of it yeah i think what we want at the end of it is is that kind of freedom you see the one on the right hand side there that kind of freedom that we can get up and make the most of life it's not always gonna be like that we're always gonna have good days and bad days is it our choice? Is it our choice whether they're good days or bad days? Or do we just let them roll over us? By the way, that, for all of you parents and things, what the best dad or mum do in the world do now, in the middle of lockdown, when the kids are kicking and screaming around you? Yeah, maybe st stick up what the best dad or mum do in the world do now, which is probably different to the way you were thinking. I don't know. There's a thought. Sarah's smiling wryly there. I saw a little one pop into screen a little earlier. But it's true, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, we've been trying to homeschool our son. Yeah. He's 27. He's got, he doesn't want to know, but it's been, it's been fun to try. Anyway, um, if anybody knows Reese, yeah. Reese came in the other day and, and saw, saw quite a few of you on the screen off camera. And he said, there's some very gorgeous people on there, aren't there? Yeah. So he may be getting in touch. Who knows? Anyway, on this journey, another couple of things because we're running short of time. I often say there's another bucket scenario, and that bucket is your energy bucket. And at the moment, it's really pertinent, isn't it? Because we need that energy, the emotional energy, to do all the good stuff we want to do. If our emotional energy goes down and the level of emotional energy in our bucket gets too low, and I have worked with people like that who are in the really low area. That's burnout time, guys. Very difficult to get back from that. If you've been there, you know what it's like, right? But being aware of where the energy in the bucket is, or the battery, if you like, is another analogy. Knowing that your battery is running down, please do something about it. Don't keep thinking we can give away emotional energy to everything and everybody around us without refilling the bucket. Doesn't work, guys. What do I do? I play music, because music's been such a big thing in my life. And I'll play all sorts of different music, because that gives me, it gives me a buzz. At the moment, I'm getting up in the morning, and Alexa is playing, uh, guess the Lord must live in New York City, which is such a, for, for the slightly older people amongst us, yeah, it's just a great song. And it's a lovely way to start the day, and it's a relaxing one. And then as the day goes on, I'll play a bit of rock and whatever, just go. But if that gives you a bit of a buzz, Two minutes out in the sunshine. Read a book. Watch anybody watching loads of series on Netflix. Yeah, sad, isn't it? Really, that we've all done that, <laughs> and then we compare notes on Netflix and things like that. But anything that's but recognise it as putting energy back in, not just take it as a for granted. Don't just couch potato. Think actually, I'm enjoying this. I'm buzzing on this. This is good fun. So try that. Re read a book. Do something different. Because what are we trying to do? We're trying to get out there, aren't we? Yeah. So we have a couple of minutes and I want to open the chat for any questions you may have. Uh, one thing I'd ask, and, and there's not an ask, there's no sell in this whatsoever, but I'd be really interested to hear from you uh, with those questions. What's resonating for you? What are you doing to change? And when are you going to do it? So if you get a chance to drop me a, and oh, someone's taking a picture of that. Well done, Beth. Uh, the new technological way of doing that. You take pictures of everything. Yeah. Um, but do drop me a line in a couple of weeks' time. I have a reason for that. And I look around to see the reason behind it. Bear with me, I'm gonna wander off, but I'm coming back.
Um, this shows I am actually wearing trousers. As someone turned up the other day and they weren't wearing anything underneath and they ruined their reputation because of it. Um, that is where this little technique came from. And some of you may be familiar. I was coaching a group of execs from a company in Bruges, yeah? And um, I went out at lunchtime and we had a really good session. I thought, how can I reinforce the session? How can I make this carry on? Because sessions can be a bit like Chinese meals, can't you? You do something and then a week later we're hungry again. We've forgotten it, we've moved on. So I, I called them my postcard from Bruges and I went back with a load of postcards from the corner shop and said, okay, fill them in. Tell me what you're going to do and then I'm going to send it to you. And when it arrives in two weeks' time, you kick yourself because we're the ones who will kick ourselves most. No one else will. Yeah? To make sure we do something about it. So this is my virtual offer to you. Um, write yourself a postcard. And then in two weeks' time, drop me an email and say, okay, this is what I've been doing since. If you need someone to... to, to I'll be, I, I will reply, I promise, to everybody. And, um, yeah, have a little conversation because that will be fun. So... Um, I'll put that up there, which is the, the contact details if you fancy getting in touch. And let me have a little look on the chat room for the next for the few minutes we've got. Neil Fulbrook, who's a lovely man down in London, who didn't turn his camera on, Neil. You're such a good looking guy, should do. Headspace app is brilliant for focusing on you. It's a great idea. The Headspace app's well worthwhile. Uh, Martha in uh, Hamburg, Calm is also a great app too. Technology, it's brilliant. Can I suggest? We need the head in the right place to use the technology. Otherwise, it's just a bit of technology. Okay, yeah, no matter what it is, and I love all these different apps. Uh, Bernie, who is in mindfulness, she's in the mindfulness world, uh, says mindfulness techniques with practice really help to create space to enable you to respond rather than react. If anyone's interested, Bernie is on, is, is on, the, is on the call there. And uh, stick, your, stick your email on there, Bernie. And if they want help with mindfulness, very, very welcome. Um, got to where's the next meeting? Oh, Sarah. Sarah's off to the next meeting. That's sad, isn't it, really? Uh, like the Habitude. Thank you, Tony. Habitude's well worthwhile remembering. Um, Mike Pennington. Hang on. Quick question, which I can't quite get on my screen. Hang on. Where did your... That's interesting. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, where did your... Where did you get the shirt? Thank you, Mike. Where did I get the shirt from? Yeah, I could make you feel right. It was a present from my daughter. Does that make you feel... Actually, I bought it, I think. Yeah, sorry, Mike. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, honestly, it's lime. I thought, well, I'm going to be a bit brighter today. Uh, so thank you. Uh, please keep in touch. If you've got any questions, I always say, drop me a line. As always, great fun to spend some time with you today. To Paul, uh, my old boss from years and years ago, who's in Florida, and it's 10 o'clock in the morning now, so you're going to have a lovely day out there. Enjoy the rest of the day, Paul. Happy birthday once again. To everybody else who's been with us today, thank you. I look forward to doing another one in a couple of weeks' time. Haven't thought about what I'm going to do yet. Any, um, any suggestions gratefully received? Um, anything you'd like me to do, just drop me an email. Um, and we'll, we'll do one in a couple of weeks' time. If you'd like to, as always. Um, it, it fills up very quickly, I must say. So that's been great fun to do. So thank you all. Love you to talk to you. Love you to have you with us. Enjoy the rest of the day. Hopefully your confidence levels will bubble up a little bit more. And if you keep on working at it, I promise you they'll bubble up a lot, lot more. So thank you very much indeed. Lovely loads and loads of comments. Uh, yeah, to Jason and Anne and everybody else, the YTV mob. Nice to see you all. So enjoy the rest of the day, guys. Thank you. <laughs>